watching Boys High School Across on News 12 Varsity. It's a semi-final rematch from a season ago, but the storyline is different because Farmingdale is the favorite. Welcome to Hofstra University and Schuert Stadium for the Nassau Class A semifinals. Syosset is the three seed. Farmingdale is the two seed as these rivals play for a chance to play for a county championship. And waiting for them next Tuesday is Massapequa. The Chiefs reaching the finals for the ninth straight season, a dominant second half against Port Washington as they await the winner of Farmingdale and Syosset. And if Massapequa loves anything, it's these two who are about to have a war here at Seward Stadium. When we looked at the preseason, the four teams that are here in the final four were the four I guess we expected maybe to be at this point. And really no surprise at Farmingdale and Syosset meeting up once again in a two-goal victory during the regular season, giving them that two seed. He's Dan Samarino, I'm David Resnick. As for Syosset, who do we look out for today if the Braves are to advance? Well, Danny Oaks, he's coming here to play in Hofstra. He's one of their poles. And what the poles have been this season, and even more so, they want to transition so often. And they want these guys to run and still be able to shoot. So watch out for the five-year starter and Dan Oaks. You'll see him on the wing during the face-off game, which is going to be so vital. The game within the game, of course, for any lacrosse contest is the face-off battle. How can Brian Michael of Farmingdale affect today's game? Well, he's a guy who's won about 71% of his face-offs this year. And if he's not the best face-off guy, he's the second best here in the county with Angelo Petrakis over at Massapequa. This kid's fast, but he's so skilled too. You will see him work in the first midfield unit. He's more than just your typical FOGO. A classic Nassau County rivalry. Farmingdale and Syosset matching up in the county semifinals. Last season, a dramatic finish in the Dalers' favor. What's in store this season? Next on News 12 Varsity. And we welcome you back to Short Stadium, Hofstra University on this gorgeous Friday evening. Syosset and Farmingdale moments from the opening face-off. But before, let's introduce you to the third member of our broadcast team, down on the sidelines, in the sun, it's Amanda Puglisi. David, these two teams faced earlier in the season, Farmingdale coming away with a 7-5 to five win. So you have to wonder, what is Coach Calabria going to change with his Syosset Braves coming into this one? He said the first time that they played, his team played very relaxed, very settled. This time around, though, they're looking to push the pace. He says we want to play a little more run and gun and see if we can catch Farmingdale sleeping a little bit. And Coach Hungerford says of his Dalers, he's a firm believer that when you get here, you don't change the stuff that's worked for you all season long. However, based on their first appearance, he felt that both teams could have shot the ball a little bit more. So he wants to see his Dalers take more shots, especially when the opportunity presents itself on offense. It's interesting, Dan. We're finally getting to the point of the year where it's warm, where it's hot, where depth matters. And we're hearing a couple of coaches that are talking essentially about picking up the tempo. It's very interesting. You're right, because you literally have, you know, the hottest day, maybe I think of the entire season in terms of the playoffs. It's what at least it feels like right now. But you, you want to see these groups transition and run. And what's kind of interesting also about Syosset wanting to still run is the fact that Brian Michael is so good at the faceoff X. So that just shows you the confidence they have in their FOGO in Ryan Lebson that even though they might, you know, score a goal, give up a goal, they're okay and feel that Lebson would be able to at least get them the ball back, get them back and, you know, be able to move in transition. But the unsettled situations for them is definitely going to be key going forward, at least for Syosset. It appeared that at least a few members of the starting attack for Syosset had some type of face paint that was illegal because a group of them came over to the side, took off their helmets, and then with some towels near the bench, cleared up their face a little bit. Perhaps they're getting ready for a post-game interview if the Braves are to win. So we're all settled now, and so too is Anthony Saloro. A junior getting the start today in between the pipes. 
a junior committed to Stony Brook, getting the start today for the Braves. And he tapped fists with Sean Gilman, the sophomore. He's been steady between the in, in between the pipes for the Dalers. Big stage for the 10th grader today. Ryan Lebson on the left for Syosset. Brian Michael for Farmingdale on the white, on the right, in the white and green. Farmingdale with initial possession, but not completely secured as it becomes a battle near the restraining line. It's picked up by the Braves and Syosset, an uncharacteristic nine and six season Started off two and four in the non-league against a gauntlet of a slate. Turned things around in league play, finishing third behind Massapequa and Farmingdale. There are only two Nassau County Class A losses. It's so interesting because John Calabria even said to us in 15 years, he's been in situations he's never been in. You know, they were down eight at one point to Manhasset. They had a tough game against them, but they had a real good game against Cold Spring Harbor. Uh, this is a, a team that's much different than in years past for Syosset, and I think that's what's kind of so, you know, confusing for the coaching staff. They're not used to it. Loose ball push against Syosset. It's Farmingdale possession, and a flag for delay of game will put the Dalers man up. A careless turnover and then a mindless mistake immediately gives Farmingdale the advantage. Yeah, it's just not a smart play by Syosset. Pucci has got to be much smarter in that situation. You do not want to start giving this offense a little bit more looks, six on five especially. In this season, a 42% success rate on the man up for Farmingdale. Farmingdale's first settled possession of the game. Their man up for 30 seconds. Seventh best offense in Nassau County. Better than 10 goals per contest. And their head coach wanting the Dalers to let it fly today against the Braves. Five seconds left on the extra man. Farmingdale didn't generate a shot as Syosset is now six on six. A shot from the outside is wide. Matt Allbetter, the junior, missing the target. And the backup there by Brian Hayden, part of the first midfield group. And if you're not familiar with Farmingdale, they don't have that one guy, at least offensively, that you can just give the ball at any given moment and he'll score three, four goals for you. But if there's anyone close to it, it is Matt Olbetter, a guy who has been battling knee injuries after knee injuries. A Division I talent is what his head coach thinks. So far, no loffers at, on the table, but again, it's just because more people are scared of that injury. Anthony Matalone gets a step. Now it's Olbetter. Matched up against Kyle Curtin. Dodging inside, bouncing one through the crease. Nice job by Saloro to keep his shoulder on the post. And Syosset can clear. Now you had Curtin working on him pretty well, but even though he spun off that check, just enough space where it would have been a very tough angle. Pushed out of bounds and a turnover. Strong ride by Kevin McCormick, a senior captain for Farmingdale. Uh, in a year in which they followed up a 13-win campaign and trip to the finals in Mike Hungerford's first season as head coach. With 13 regular season wins plus a victory over Plainview JFK. Only losses to Massapequa, the top seed, awaiting today's winner, and Pleasantville of Section 1, which is playing for a section title in its sixth straight year, now in Class D. And a one goal game and that one too, and they were missing McCormick. Matt alone lost his footing and he rotates it around. Brian Hayden, and now Olbetter, a tough catch 
and an even better shot as Farmingdale strikes first. Oh boy, what a bouncer by Olbetter. Over the shoulder of his defender and into the corner of the net. That was beautifully placed as he works in the right wing here. Goes one-on-one, -on -one, has the match up there and actually got a step on Dan Oaks because that pass came outside. Oaks was already going for the stick check. Had some extra space, turned the shoulder real nicely and a one nothing lead for the Dalers. Ryan Lebson rakes it free. Scoots it back to Saloro. And another early turnover by the Braves. And that's an area that hurt them so much during the regular season, especially early. Defensively, they were not as stout as they are right now. That's been much better. The numbers don't lie, but the eye test helps too. But it's those turnovers and unforced ones that really plagued them in the early part of the season that they started to really fix up, I guess, towards the last three, four weeks of the year. But you're not going to be able to beat a Daler team like that or going forward and anything else if you're going to be turning over the ball. Farmingdale won this matchup last season. If you include the 7-5 victory during the 2018 regular year, the Dalers have won two straight over the Braves. Good defense by Curtin to stand his ground against the shifty Matt alone. But the aggressive Dalers ride making it difficult for Syosset. And here's Max Virch into the box. Monfort off the split dodge is denied. Sean Gilman tested for the first time and the sophomore comes up with the stop. Well, that was a real tough shot and don't forget that even though Amirati was falling to his feet on that Monfort split dodge. Actually, was thinking of a fake where he came back across with a face dodge back to his right, even though he still got a body enough on him where it wouldn't have been as easy of a shot, so he had to shoot it from his knees instead. That's a real good save against the lefty. Five minutes gone by into the first quarter. Farmingdale with the lead. Matt Olbetter, the lone goal on either side. Second midfield group of Dominic Chaccio, Brandon Amorati, and Jack Cavioli. They get a run here for Farmingdale, the number two seed, as they nurse a one goal lead. Chaccio attacking a short stick on the wing. All better lets it fly. And there is very little thought when the junior catches it as to what his process is. Yeah, you're going to see 13 on 13 basically all game long. That's Oaks against All Better. So far has gotten the better of him once in this contest. But All Better is probably the best shooter on this group. We've already seen him unleash it a few times. It doesn't matter which wing and which, which hand. Matt alone, the sophomore, draws a crowd as he curls to the top. Farmingdale has been patient as they've controlled possession. Chaccio looks to attack a short stick as the stall warning comes on and he inverts behind the cage. Monfort aggressively pushing the midfielder towards the end line. When do you see the stall warning put on in the one nothing game in the first? Except for the all better shot, Farmingdale hasn't really looked towards the cage. Good defense by the Braves, but another turnover. They give it right back as a ground ball battle ensues. Cavioli was there first, swiped away by Oaks. 
And now he chases it down on the far side of the field. Transition opportunity for Syosset, but without numbers. Good job by Farmingdale to get personnel back defensively. And Syosset, in the form of Jack Pucci, needs to settle. And we haven't seen a lot of touches here for Syosset. After winning that first faceoff, which alone was, I guess, kind of a rare thing, because you don't win many against Brian Michael. And that was a full group effort to try and grab the first ball. Since then, you've had a pe uh, unforced turnover, a penalty, unforced turnover. It has not been easy thus far for Syosset, and you want to get these offensive guys, and that's something that Mike Hungerford was really worried about coming, and he said, listen, there's four offensive guys on this team that you always have to keep an eye on. One of them is 22, who is now working in the midfield in J.P. Lanning. Christian Lyons joins this top group because Jack Munford just played a series of defense. So Lanig, as mentioned, and Liam Kalbacker, who did not play in the regular season matchup, completes the first midfield unit. Lyons against a defender that lost his footing. We've seen that quite a bit. And it's somewhat ironic because it's been dry as of late compared to how wet the early season was. Giovinco has a defender held up. Marcotte waits for the junior to make a decision. Approaching the three minute mark as Syosset looks for the equalizer. And for a team that's loved to pick up the pace, it's not often you see this kind of cat and mouse game behind the cage. Giovinco has mixed up between the midfield and on the attack, but he's a decent feeder. Four other players cutting in front of the net. The sixth Brave is off to the side. It's currently five on five right up the middle. Now the question is, when do you put him on the timer? And I think it's coming. A.J. Alexander stays away from the play. As Giovinco holds. Off ball foul. See, it was a matter of time before you would end up seeing a violation of some sort or that stall warning. So that's again, that's an unforced turnover. You don't like that if you're Syosset, whether you agree with the call or not. Nearly a minute held up. Farmingdale gets a touch. Brian Hayden, successful clear. John Calabria on the sideline, hot after that call. Someone that coaches with great intensity and grit and his team plays with those characteristics minute 30 to go in a first quarter in which Farmingdale has scored the only goal and controlled possession time picked up by Stephen Conti again good transition D by Farmingdale forcing Syosset to slow it down they can play for the final shot if they wish, but Kyle Backer would rather tie it up. Top shelf for the goal. One all here in the first quarter. That's about the last guy you want to let get his hands free on the wing. With too much space, dodging away from the goal, Liam Callbacker has kind of been the difference maker of this group over the last couple of weeks battled injuries all throughout the early portion of the season. What a shot to the top right corner with that sidearm. There's the space. Moves it away. Tie game. Ryan Lebson against Brian Michael, it's a face-off violation against Syosset. Brian Michael, as we described at the top of our broadcast, more than just a Fogo. 
perhaps the most skilled face-off taker offensively in Nassau County, although he does not stay on for this offensive run. And you can not expect Farmingdale to try and attempt anything until they get either the stall warning on, or maybe not. Smith off the face-off game, lets it rip. Saloro tracked it high to high. Big save and plenty of time for the Braves. Pucci leaning in, throws to the middle. It's a loose ball collected by Hegarty and throws it to Gilman, just placing it right in the circle. Five seconds to go. Launch towards the cage and too high of the circle. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter. A trip to the Nassau County final on the line between these rivals. 12 minutes in the books from Hofstra, Farmingdale, and Syosset tied on News 12 Varsity. Leading into Memorial Day weekend, a look at the Syosset faithful that are squarely baking in the sun. But it is a welcome sign for all the cross fans after dealing with all the rain and snow throughout March and April. With Dan Saverino, I'm David Resnick, our entire News 12 Varsity crew here at Schuert Stadium for the Nassau A semifinal. Massapequa has already booked a trip to the championship game for the ninth straight year. Either Farmingdale or Syosset will join the Chiefs next Tuesday at six o'clock. Amanda Puglisi down on the sideline with more from the Syosset huddle. Well, the Syosset coach is certainly happy with the performance of their Braves in that first quarter, but the coaching staff telling their team, specifically on defense, settle down, don't panic on the clears. We can't be having all those unforced turnovers. We just need to slow it down, take a deep breath, and reminding their guys, hey, this time now on defense, you're gonna be on the opposite side of us coaches, so we're not gonna be here to help you out. So you need to just remember to talk to one another on defense. You know, there are enough coaches on that Syosset sideline where I think their voices will carry. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very passionate coaching staff overall. A uh, few guys who actually had coaches in different sports, wrestling and soccer. It's a well put together group. They have a proud tradition, but so does Farmingdale, who have now just won two of four faceoffs. Much different than what we saw during the first meeting between these two teams. And something that John Calabria has said is Ryan Lepson, he thinks, has been working harder over the last month and a half, specifically for Brian Michael. Syosset's been double pulling the face off and Lebson on that last win, not even needing the services of Oaks and Virch from the wings. And might I add that the Syosset coaching staff, dapper with their matching attire today. They've got their own set of uniforms. Kalbacher, the goal scorer for Syosset in the first quarter, left alley dodge. Now it's Giovinco curling around. 2-1 Syosset as the Braves take their first lead of the contest. Boy, does this kid love those shots in tight. Andrew Giovinco, the junior, coming off an 11-point game in Tuesday's contest against Hicksville, that quarterfinal. Now before, he was waiting for the open man. This time, decides just to dodge right around the crease. Here he goes, spins off, turn around, boom, top shelf, and a 2-1 lead for the Braves. Can Syosset play make it, take it? Brian Michael jumped. Another face-off win for a face-off unit and a Fogo in Ryan Lebson that's gaining confidence with every draw. And that's one of the questions about that transition game itself and something that even I asked John Calabria, does that just show at least Ryan the confidence you have in what he's able to do? 
And, and that you, you don't mind the fact that you can still transition, go quickly, even though you're facing a, a tough face-off guy. And he said, yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of the difference now. We, we kind of have to almost remind these kids, listen, we know it, but he has the confidence in himself, and he's really worked so hard. Call backer, the advantage against the short stick. Picked up by Hegarty, puts it on Cage and Gilman the save. Sophomore goalie bailing out the defense after Callbacker got freed in a favorable matchup. Now it's Alexander behind the cage against Onofrio. A wild shot from Alexander the senior. And while the Sayasa defense might not be adjacent to the coaching staff, now it's the offense's turn to get an earful from the spirited bunch. Sayasa has scored the last two to take the lead. And this group just looks a little more confident in offense and six on six. We didn't see that early on in the season when they were dealing with some struggles. And yeah, they were banged up too. Callbacker has missed the majority of the season, almost half of it. Pucci hasn't been 100% either. Cross crease and it's intercepted. Good stick by Tom Marcotte. McCormick out there as well as Farmingdale played that possession defensively with a couple of pulls. McCormick dispossessed. Callbacker lets it fly. And finally, a transition opportunity for Syosset, something that John Calabria told us earlier this week. He really wanted to emphasize with his team. Yeah, and it's not often you also see McCormick turn over the ball like that, but you're staying right on top of him. And that transition game is tough when you have guys who can finally go. Open on the crease, J.P. Lennig. He doesn't need much space. He took a whole lot there, 3-1 Braves. Well, this is the fourth game that JP was moved to the midfield from being the starting attackman all season long. So he's very comfortable around that crease. The future Brown product, fakes high, goes low. Nobody caught him on the slide, and I don't know how. It was a huge mistake right back there. Nobody was looking, and that's a mistake by Rich Hickis also, who was looking up. And then you had your defender, D'Onofrio, also looking upwards. So because of that, those two short sticks are out of position, and it gives a lot of space for a very dangerous, crafty stick player. That is just a breakdown where the most dangerous offensive player for Syosset was not marked. And another face-off win for Syosset. They've been perfect in this second quarter as they've scored the last three. Monfort dodging in, pushed aside. Hegarty was there to stonewall him. Oak stays on for now. He'll cross midfield and give way to Lanig. Third different goal scorer for Syosset today. Liam Callbacker scored in the first quarter. Andrew Giovinco and J.P. Lanig first gave Syosset a lead and then increased it. 3-1 in favor of the Braves. The underdog in this matchup. It was a rough early season against teams that at the very least made the semifinals of their section playoffs. Falling to the turf, Callbacker missing the target and backed up by Giovinco. That was a heck of a catch by Callbacker with the one hand and then still being able to roll dodge off and find an open look towards the net. Just fell awkwardly when he went down. Immediately to Alexander on the restart. Christian Lyons checks in. For the moment, it seems, Farmingdale double pulling the midfield. So Alexander, the attackman, attacks Brian Hayden, the short stick defensive midfielder. 
the offense for Syosset stalling and John Calabria calling timeout. So Syosset offensively has started to come to play here in the last couple of minutes. They're looking more consistent and more comfortable with the ball. And I think a lot of that has to do with the changes they have made over the last few weeks in terms of moving guys around. You just saw the last goal Atlantic, but he has not been used to being the guy. And that's been the kind of the thing this year. He hasn't really been the guy ever until this year. And production has gone down a little bit in the past. He's always had you know, someone with him, whether a Mac O'Keefe or others. But this group, you look at the numbers and it looks good right now, right? You know, the 16, almost eight, 17 goals per game over the last three and numbers overall. But when you look at the first few games of the season and in those losses, they were not scoring. They were turning over the ball. Defensively, they were laid on slides. They were sloppy. This is a different Syosset team in May and April and late April than it was in March and the early portion of April. You saw the two Long Island championships for Syosset back in 2008, 2015. They are also five-time county champs as they look to get back to the county championship game for the first time since 2016 when they won their most recent championship and defeated Massapequa in that final. Prior to the timeout, Liam Callbacker was removed from the lineup and earned the attention of the athletic trainer on the bench. He is back on his feet and walking towards the substitution box, appearing eager to check back in when given the opportunity. He looks good to go having a discussion with the coaching staff, but this is still a very important possession now for Syosset. You want to continue to do what you've been doing pretty well, and that's been spacing the ball around and then dodging towards the cage. Monfort in tight. Reached his stick around and missed the far post. And then he stepped in the crease to give it back to Farmingdale, who has not had possession through five and a half minutes of this third quarter, second quarter, rather. And that's what's so rare because Farmingdale is usually a team that possesses the ball so often. It was an issue they had against Massapequa in one of those two losses this year where they just could not get the ball in their stick. And now Mike Hungerford is going to call a timeout. And I think Coach Hungerford, sensing what we were just talking about, how Farmingdale has not had possession, they've relinquished the lead as they trail by two, that this is a crucial possession in order to get rhythm back. A team that is both in the top 10, number seven to be exact in both offense and defense in Nassau County. And it's really been their defense allowing under six goals per game that has really been the backbone of this unit. Listen, if you looked at the beginning of the season and you knew you were losing Brody Agers, who was one of the best defender, well, best goalies at least, coming back this year, uh, you know, would have been a second year starter. The question was coming in, how are you going to replace that in goal? Because you have so many key pieces on the defensive side with all the guys with the poles who have numerous years experience, a lot of seniors. Gilman has been exceptional this year as just a sophomore. Offensively, they have, you know, been getting it done and, and moving the ball around well, despite not having nearly that one main guy. The closest you can say probably is all better. But you want to get back to those early fundamentals, and that was kind of an issue for them in some of these losses. And it, they even said it. Hungerford even brought this up this week. If we break down from our traditional fundamentals of clearing the ball well, not turning it over, we're going to have a really tough time against Syosset because you cannot give that team more offensive looks. Start of the year with eight straight wins. Liam Kalbacher, Kalbacher in the middle of that group. He's with a group of offensive midfielders for Syosset. Mentioned earlier that he was removed from the game momentarily, but it appears that a player who has missed time this season with injury is okay to return. Midway through the second quarter out of a Farmingdale timeout. This is all better. The goal scorer for Farmingdale carrying it around to behind the cage. 
Matt alone emerges from goal line extended, and now Rob Smith, right hand dominant, pushed away by Conti. That pass short hops its way out of bounds. Syosset gets it back after a careless Farmingdale turnover. I even said it, if we turn over the ball on the offensive side 14 times in a game, there's no chance we're gonna win this contest. Well, to my count, that's already been at least three or four. Unsettled for Syosset. Here's Callbacker firing, missing the target. Backed up by Giovinco, closest to the ball, where and when it went out of bounds. Approaching the five minute mark of the second quarter, Syosset has scored the only two goals in this frame. For all the talk of increased shots and more of an emphasis on transition, it's been a steady game so far. We have to think back after that first little blunder on their first possession and then not having the ball for a handful of time they have been playing much much better even this good hustle play right behind the cage by Hickis which earns Farmingdale the possession but Syosset looks good right now and Farmingdale looks anything but that John Calabria nearly two decades as the head coach talked a lot about earlier this week the mental game it's a bigger emphasis today than maybe it was 10, 20 years ago. And to your point, it does seem like the Braves are feeling more confident, are looking more confident, and outside of that mistake, executing at a higher clip. And there's also a lot of guys on this field who lost to Farmingdale last year in that heartbreaking fashion with just five seconds left in the semifinal game, an 11-10 game. They know it. Listen, you don't have to motivate these guys anymore. You don't have to motivate any of your seniors especially. You're playing at a big stadium that a week ago was hosting an NCAA quarterfinal. You're playing potentially for the final time. You don't want your season to end on this Friday night. That three-day weekend's not gonna be fun for you anyway. Again, Farmingdale passing in tight quarters, and that leads to another turnover. Monfort on his horse, streaking in and dumping it to his right to Jack Pucci. Like, Initial break wasn't there. Now Syosset slows it down. Dan Oaks just made a heck of a play on that far sideline. He'll be playing on his field next year for Seth Tierney in the Hofstra Pride. And if Seth gets someone like him to do what he's been doing at Syosset for so long and is so versatile with that pull, well, he got himself a really, really good one. But that's a heck of a play. And again, Another mistake in the offensive end for Farmingdale. That's a tight pass. You can't really do that. You're already working against one of their top cover guys. That pass handcuffs Pucci. It's recovered by Farmingdale, and Gilman looks to clear. I hear Coach Tierney's office overlooks the field. Yeah, top left, it has actually a big ball mark that got hit last week during the quarterfinals during some practices. They had to clean that one up. Hickis, a nice maneuver near midfield to successfully clear it to the offensive end for Farmingdale. Approaching about 18 scoreless minutes for this Farmingdale team, who scored first and has since allowed three straight. Just the third settled possession for Farmingdale in this quarter. As their leading scorer, Matt Allbetter, curls around the crease. Sends one out of bounds into the blue ribbon, which I must say looks Really nice. They had to redo the field last year. It does look good. They were getting ready for obviously the big stage. And by the big stage, of course, I mean the Nassau County Championship games, which are played here every single year. Another bad turnover in the midfield, though. Like, this is something that they have to correct. You know, Sayas is going to call a timeout at this point. It's Farmingdale that needs to figure things out. I mean, there's a buck 52 left here in the half. 
that's still a ton of time to be able to get a stop, get it back to at least a one goal game, if not potentially an equalizer. They're lucky that they're only down two at this point because the amount of turnovers that they have had on the offensive side of the ball, it's just been a very sloppy game for them thus far. This is a coach who has, you know, tons of experience, mostly as an assistant. He's won state championships. He won state championship as an assistant under Bob Hartram. When he was at Farmingdale, it was 14 years there. He, he won a couple state titles with Dennis Bond at Cold Spring Harbor. You know, uh, this group is well coached at Hungerford, has continued and understands what this program is all about, a program full of excellence. And that is what Farmingdale has been. That's why they're once again in this conversation, despite the fact that the last number of championships have been won by either Massapequa or Syosset. He's a Daler through and through, class of 86, former goalie for the legendary Bob Hartrift. He's in the building at Farmingdale and a very natural choice to, to take over the reins of one of Nassau County's, Long Island's, and America's premier programs. And while we talked about Farmingdale, Amanda Puglisi was listening in to the team that called the timeout, Syosset. The Syasa coaching staff re reminding their players that, hey, lacrosse and boxing, it may sound crazy, but it's actually pretty similar. There's this phrase in boxing that the second you let your gloves down, the other team's going to come in and they're going to knock you out. We cannot let our gloves down. We have to keep up because the second we do that, Farmingdale is going to come and they're going to look for the knockout. So for the last minute and a half of this half, we need to just keep our gloves up and we need to keep going at the Farmingdale Dalers. You know, Dan, you told me earlier that a number of assistant coaches on Syosset are head coaches of other sports. I didn't realize there were some boxing coaches down there, too. But I think the point is well taken and part of why Syosset called the timeout when it did. Curling inside. Gilman, a denial of Giovinco. Farmingdale ball. By the sophomore with a gigantic save against Giovinco, who slipped inside. Just happened to shoot it right at him. So good position. And now here comes the transition. Farmingdale with the timeout to burn. They'll use it here. Giovinco getting a good look at the cage. He got in tight. Better job by Gilman to keep it just a two goal game. That's a body save. That got him right on the right arm. They're set up for a long time with the sophomore. It's a body He's going to be real good. And this is a, a you know a program that still has had you know fantastic goalies for a number of years. And Sean Gilman, who was the number three last year, and then battled concussion late in the season, missed summer ball with them. Injuries come down, and before you know it, he's the starter all season long. Gilman took that one off the body, and now can Farmingdale counter? Can they finally strike after nearly 20 minutes without a goal? It was 8.37 to go in the first quarter where Matt Allbetter scored for Farmingdale, put the Dalers in front, one nothing. Since then, callbacker Giovinco Lanig, three straight for Syosset as the Braves lead in the final minute of play. A rematch from last season's semifinal. A game in which Farmingdale won to return to the county championship for the first time since 2011. The magical season for the Dalers, earning that elusive state championship. Sean Gilman was enjoying, I don't know, elementary school when the Dalers were celebrating. And the only state championship during all of those illustrious wins, 700 plus from Bob Hartramp, and that was the one that I guess mattered the most for him to be able to win that final game. Syosset's never won the final game. That's something John Calabria knows very, very well and felt coming into the season, this team would have that potential these are two very, very good schools, no matter what, here in A. 
Of course, uh, you have to still run through the potential defending state champions, but and the defending Nassau champions, that is, in their next contest. Farmdale's just one shot away from bringing this back. Matt alone, side of the net. Daler's bench erupted as if they closed the gap. Just seconds to go in the quarter, and Syosset content with just running time off the clock. Anthony Saloro pleased with the first half effort of his defense. Braves lead by two at the break. Defense ruled the day through the first 24 minutes. Offense at a premium. Braves lead at intermission here from Hofstra. It is playoff season around the Tri-State, which means our crew is pretty busy. Back here at Hofstra, it's halftime. Syosset 3-1 over Farmingdale. At the break in the Nassau Class A semifinal. And the winner of today's contest will meet Massapequa in the championship game that comes your way Tuesday, May 29th. The Nassau County A Championship, 6 o'clock here at Hofstra, where you can watch it live on Optimum Channel 61, News12Varsity.com, and of course the News 12 Varsity app. And then the next day we cross the bridge into New Jersey for a pair of championship sectional final games in the Garden State. It'll be a double header, teams and location to be determined based off of results from this weekend. But again, same three places to watch the action live. And then in case you're not tired, because we won't be, Thursday, May 31st, Suffolk A, the girls' final, highly anticipated matchup at 5.30 between West Islip and Northport. The Lions and Tigers will battle on channel 61, news12rc.com and the News 12 Varsity app. A lot of playoff and championship action coming your way over the next two weeks. But for now, we are at halftime. Syosset and Farmingdale here at Short Stadium. First half in the books, and Syosset holds the lead. Low scoring first half under sunny skies here in Nassau County for the semifinal matchup between Syosset and Farmingdale. It was actually the Dalers relatively early in the first quarter that got off to a good start. Yeah, Matt Olbetter with this wicked shot. Nice little bouncer, but that's all she wrote from then on out because then you started to see the Syosset offense going with Callbacker and Giovinco and Lanig. But the stops were there as well, and I think that was the most impressive thing here. Solaro has been pretty, pretty good so far in this game. And here's that goal from Giovinco. They've been finding their space on little breakdowns right around the crease time and time again, including this one. Who's taking J.P. Lanning? That's got to be corrected. You can't let 22 have that good of a look straight to the cage. That's what made the game 3-1 at that point. Gilman's keeping them into the contest with an excellent stop. But on the other side, defensively, Syosset has looked as good as ever this season. One of the big question marks for Syosset coming into this contest, how would they fare at the faceoff X? Ryan Lepsin has been better than good. And after that first one, which they won, then he dropped two straight. He's won every single one since in different ways. You've seen them on the violation, you've seen them clean wins, you've seen them with the poles. That has been the difference maker so far. Part of a reason why Syosset has the halftime lead. Second half is next on News 12 Varsity. Closing in on the start of the second half between Syosset and Farmingdale. And during the break, Amanda Puglisi had the chance to check in with both teams. Amanda? 
And the word confidence was on both of these coaches' minds. And when I spoke to Coach Calabria, he said his team certainly settled in and they were playing with more confidence toward the second half of that first half. The only thing is, though, he said we finished that half with three turnovers on offense. So we need to get the guys back in that mindset of how they were playing earlier on in that second quarter. And yet Farmingdale, who did jump out to that early one nothing lead, but Coach Hungerford saying after that, we played terrible. The good news is, though, we're only trailing by two. So for Farmingdale, it's about getting their confidence back up and it's about getting back to the fundamentals and the things that got them here. Farmingdale and Syasa just warming up and we had a question as to Anthony Saloro. Would he play the second half? There was a thought John Calabria had coming into today's game. Would he split with Joey Greco? All indications so far is that Saloro will be out there in the second half. You can see a small gathering of the of the goalies, but after allowing only one goal and your defense is playing well, I think you're probably overthinking things if you look to make a change. Yeah, I think that's his goal to lose today. Uh, the way he has looked. And again, this is still a guy who, you know, beginning of the season, his first start was against St. Anthony's, and guess what? They got 15 against St. Anthony's in that game. It wasn't just him, though, throughout that entire contest. He saw time last year as well. Now Cody Johnston is out for the rest of the season. He's been having a foot issue throughout the entire year, and that's why Greco is the backup to the young freshman. But they felt comfortable with all three of their netminders. And right now, Solaro has been making the saves that they've needed, but the defense, I think, has come up with some of the biggest stops. So while there was some question, perhaps, in the Syosset pipes, Sean Gilman... We expected him to play the entire game. He's ready to go for the second half. And as a sophomore, to understand that he'd be competing for the job back in the fall because of injury, he has really solidified that position. Where Mike Hungerford thought, with our starting goalie, we're probably the two seed. They dropped to the three preseason, end up earning the two, at least part because of the play of Sean Gilman. Yeah, he's been really good. And Brody's been also like another assistant coach on the team. And when you lose for pretty much the rest of the season, he's going to play at St. John's next year. From the football season on, you get another coach on the sideline. That takes pressure off you as a coach. And Gilman is accepting and learning. So can Brian Michael turn things around against Ryan Levson? Early answer is yes. Face-off win for Farmingdale as Michael swim dodge shoots. Miss fires wide. Michael, of course, wearing the legacy number for Farmingdale. Typically worn by a senior midfielder. And number 40 for John Grimanacker, who passed away a while ago now, 1998. It's been a while. Pancreatic, uh, pancreatitis is what he passed away with. He was a guy who played at Farmingdale. He, he played at uh, Johns Hopkins, won national championships there, and they wanted someone who exemplified that toughness, and they couldn't think of someone better this season than Michael. Off the substitution game, McCormick with the long pole shoots it high. These guys have been slipping a lot on this field, really both sides. And it's kind of surprising, but see, that, those kind of turnovers right there, those passes, they're just not on the same page at this point. And when you start to see the verbal miscues also afterwards, that's not a good sign. You got to buckle in here. You still have tons of time left in this game to figure it out. A bounce shot that is high of the cage. Conti had first dibs at it. Picked up by Syosset. Kyle Curtin, a senior defender, motors across midfield. He's quick, Kyle Curtin. Oaks slices inside, shoots and scores. It's a long pole goal. Danny Oaks, 4-1, Syosset. Look at those stick skills. Maybe you should give him a short stick. My goodness, well, Curtin starts the play on one end of the field with his speed and transitioning up. Then you give it to Danny Oaks, okay? 
he has three defenders on him. So already with the pole, it helps a little bit because you can tuck it up high. But look at this stick work. Weaves through two, shoots on the run. One quick motion, and he is fired up. Wow, what a goal. Perfect time to strike for the first time this season. Three on three battle at the face off X. Procedural call against Farmingdale. Syosset possession. Braves playing with confidence and energy. You know, it's funny because John Calabria even said it this week. He's, we treat Virch and Oaks like short sticks. We treat them like that because we want them to move in transition, feel comfortable, still being able to shoot. They think that they can always shoot, and you can see why, because when you do stuff like that on the field, that just opens up your field a little bit more and, and keeps you really weary on that defensive side because you're not really sure exactly what to do, how to match up with him. Is he going to come off? Is he going to stay on the field at the time? He's a weapon. Alexander from X. And finally, Syosset gets their transition goal. Having the mentality to push the pace from defense to offense, but they couldn't break through unsettled in the first half. Finally getting it done to increase the lead to three. Braves have scored the last four goals. They take a commanding position early in the third quarter. Tommy Dulciato. A run for the second midfield line with the lead. Chris Darty out there as well, along with Christian Lyons. Liam Callbacker joins the midfield and a stall warning slapped on to Syosset. Giovinco overran the pass, but scooped it back up. Now it's unsettled. A shot got blocked. Picked up by Monfort. Callbacker switching direction, shooting low. And the backup by Syosset by just inches. Liam Callbacker looks okay. I mean, for a guy who had leg injuries this year and wasn't 100% in being able to move, that's why they've mixed him up between his stick skills just around the attack to being able to run in transition in the midfield. He looks like the player of old. It, what's kind of different with Syosset? A pump fake, a walk inside by Monfort, Monfort, and he missed the target with a gorgeous look. And he's another one who's found some openings in the interior. What's different with Syosset, beginning of the year, injuries early on, some struggles being able to connect. End of the year, everyone's healthy. It's like having a new team, and there is a connection there. If you compare them to the teams that are left in Massapequa, who is depleted, lost two of their top defenders, still, you know, rattled off win after win. And then Farmingdale, which had a couple of injuries themselves, it's just kind of funny to think that it's almost polar opposites. And that's why Syosset, I think, for many, was the team people wanted to play the least coming in to May. Pucci rolling, firing. Shot by nine, Jack Pucci. Settles outside of the, the crease. Of block by 44, Kevin McCormick. McCormick got the brunt of that shot and an official whistle to make sure that he was okay. Long outlet to D'Onofrio to get a touch in the box. Okay, you're the Farmingdale offensive coordinator. What are you thinking? Allbetter has been the go-to guy and he's been the one that's been ripping off the shots, but we haven't really seen them dodge well to the cage. And I think that's their biggest issue. 
their ball movement has been off, but you also don't want to see these one-on-one -on -one plays where you know how to slide over and then there's nothing there. But make a dodge, then move the ball. That bouncer wildly off target. Farmingdale racing to the corner for the backup. The only goal for the Dalers, three minutes and 23 seconds into the contest. Matt Allbetter got the scoring started. <laughs> 27 or so minutes since, Farmingdale looking for that second goal. Question mark, dodge and a shot. Saloro saw it the whole way. Easy stop for the junior. And that's the other issue too. Some of these shots have been right there. But here's a turnover in the midfield. Take advantage of this one in between the lines. Scooped up on the run by Hayden. It's a high pass for Cavioli and Syosset comes running back the other way. Here's Virch. Virch lets it rip. Another long pole goal. 5-1 Braves on a run against Farmingdale in the Nassau semis. Well, the third quarter is the quarter of the poles. Kyle Curtin again, back at his own end, right? Uses that speed right up the middle of the field. Goes the opposite way and then finds Birch. And Birch, you know he was going to step down on this. And what makes it so difficult for a goalie against those poles is learning and seeing where the timing is to come out of the cross. Well, Max Birch has a goal, his second of the season. Dan Oaks has a goal, his second of the season. And the lead is 5-1. Hard-earned face-off win for Michael. Tough catch, Hickis. But the ball is on the turf. Michael running away from pressure. All better. Blocked. It was off of Oaks. And give some credit here, not just to Virch and Oaks, and those are the guys we talk about so much, but I think the defense as a whole, Kyle Curtin. Off the restart, Farmingdale ends the drought. Luke Woodland. Massive goal for Farmingdale as the Dalers show life. So you get the restart, Woodland gets a step, and he got a step on Max Birch. And if you already have some space, actually check that it was Singer. The slide came over and Birch actually ran into his man. But the shot already came, so I think it was just tough for Solaro to actually see the ball come out when he got two guys coming across. So in a way, he was kind of screened on that play. But that was a much needed goal. Listen, it's only a three goal game. I, it's not out of question at this point. You just need a run here if you were the Dalers. Syosset does not double pull the wings here. Monfort with a short stick will come racing in from the near side as Michael for Farmingdale battles Lebson of Syosset. Headsy play on the scoop, getting it to Alexander. And a loose ball push allows the Braves to settle. Farmingdale was winning the faceoff battle up to that point. Only two wins so far for Syosset here in the third quarter, but that was a pretty big faceoff win, not just because obviously you have the possession, but you take away that quick rush. You slow down, you, you reset yourself, and you can settle in to get back to what you've been doing well. Farmingdale opting to face guard callbacker with a short stick. Lions inverts against a pole, and it rotates to the top for Alexander, who will look to attack from the top of the box. Monfort, a split, and now a roll. Speeding down the right alley, draws a double team. Still carries with the righty cradle. Picked up by a third defender, and sends it to Pucci. 
He flips it behind his back. It's an errant pass. It's on the turf, and Farmingdale racing the other way. A rip and a save. Soloro, denial. Pucci got too cute on one end, and then you have an unsettled situation on the other side. You move the ball perfectly. You try and shoot it high. But again, Soloro, good position. And now a flag is on the, the field. Behind the back, Alexander missed the corner. Kevin McCormick is trotting off after the penalty. And this was a play that was started by Marcotte. A wind and fire and something that we've seen, including that shot from Matt alone. They're not changing angles against the junior keeper. And you know what? That angle, I think, tells a better story because at first glance, I thought he shot it up high and the stick was already up high there. He shot it right into that mess. You cannot be doing that there. If you're going sidearm at that point, you have time. You're settling in. Crank that baby upstairs, or if not, drop it on him. Man up for a minute. Syosset already with the three goal advantage. First time on the EMO. Ball is down, Giovinco picks it back up. A scramble for it. Lanig. Under three minutes to go. Third quarter. Right on the crease, Gilman. Perfect positioning to stop Jack Pucci. I guess he saw an opening up high on that far side. He likes those shots in tight. Syosset increased the lead to 5-1. And then after nearly 30 minutes of play, Farmingdale scored their second goal. Allbetter and Woodland, the two goal scorers. And Farmingdale with possession, about two minutes to go third quarter, a chance to make it a goal run. Smith, Hayden, Cavioli. This is Jack Cavioli. Faced, dodging, running by the defender. Now it's Smith's turn. Into Virch. And a loose ball hold against Farmingdale. Job well done by the four-year starter heading to Maryland, Max Virch. Yeah, it's a heck of a play by Virch, being able to lose the ball, then body his position up. A turnover in one end. Marcotte again, another ground ball. This fired from McCormick. 116 remaining in the third quarter. Farmingdale with possession on the restart behind with Matt alone. We've seen Michael get more runs here in the second half than he did in the first two quarters. You wonder if maybe that was just to save his legs and his energy going forward. Gives another offensive weapon for you. Farmingdale is an offense based in team concepts. They might lack the go-to player, but they've done it as a unit. Who steps up here in the final 30 seconds of a third quarter where Farmingdale trails by three? Fifteen seconds. Matt alone on the crease. Great catch by Woodland. Lost it on the spin. Six seconds to go. A run to the crease. Cavioli got popped, but before he got knocked down, he stepped in the circle. And good sportsmanship by Anthony Saloro to make sure his opponent was okay. 
as he was hunched over laying down in the circle. Yeah, it's a dangerous spot either way for Cavioli where he was coming in, working against two guys. Heck of tenacity going to the cage. But again, nothing to show for it. Just the one goal now in two quarters of play. That's why those Braves lead by three. The first half belonged to the defense. The third quarter belonged to defenders who could score. Dan Oaks, Max Birch, long pole goals for Sayasa to energize the Braves. They have the lead into the fourth. Set for the final 12 minutes of this Nassau Class A semifinal. Sayasa with the 5-2 lead over Farmingdale. It was 3-1 at half. Sayasit tacked on two more before Farmingdale finally broke through for the second time. With Dan Savarino, I'm David Resnick. The third member of our broadcast team is Amanda Puglisi, who checked in between quarters for an update. Well, the Farmingdale coaching staff telling their guys it doesn't look on offense like we know what we're doing because we're not echoing the calls. We're not communicating. When we call out a play, you need to echo it so everybody knows. It looks like only some guys are in the proper spots. Again, it goes back to that lack of communication because they're not talking and they're not echoing the play. So that's something that they need to do a better job of, Coach Hungerford says, in the last 12 minutes. You know, in the age of sugarcoating things, Mike Hungerford is uh, really direct and to the point. Hey, listen, he's old school. Uh, he is. This is a, a whole staff that's full of Farmingdale guys. They get the pride factor of this, and he's not wrong. Yeah. Off the wing, Dan Oaks. In a lot of ways... Oaks and Virch tell the story of the game in the way that they've affected all three phases. They've been on the wings on face-offs. They've been part of a defensive unit that has only allowed two goals while they've combined for two goals on the offensive end. It's been really impressive. I mean, they make that change a couple of weeks ago. Well, really, a little more than a couple of weeks ago now. It's been almost a month. They made that change of double polling the wings and realizing that they needed another way to be able to earn a face-off and give more help on that side. They also made the change a couple of weeks ago of using the transition game with the poles. You already knew what they can do on their own end of the fields, but now you just added them into two more facets of the game, and by doing so, you have been able to, at least today, win all three parts of the field. Also credit Ryan Lebson for the adjustments that he has made since the regular season contest in which Brian Michael was successful successful at the face-off X for the Dalers. Yeah, Michael's only had trouble with one guy this year, and that was Angelo Petrakis of Massapequa. Whoever wins today has to see next Tuesday. With that said, you know, he's not used to being on the losing end of face-offs, and right now he has lost more than he has won. For a guy who has generally won Seven out of ten almost every single time. Syosset's been comfortable playing slow offensively, getting the directive from their coaching staff to spread it out, using the substitution game to delay a bit more and drip even more time off the clock as callbacker across midfield. They're going to play a bit of a substitution game with Oaks to try to create transition and hang up D'Onofrio. As D'Onofrio is just locking off Cal Backer. And it came out of the box. That's them forgetting that there was a stall warning still on while they were running that call. In transition, Farmingdale getting one back. Oh, Kevin oh, McCormick oh. off the restart, just clipping the corner. Well, Mike Hungerford has always said Kevin McCormick thinks he's an offensive player, and that's why. Third goal of the season for the senior who is Delaware bound. And after a mistake on the Syosset end, not remembering the fact that this is a stall warning and that's why they lost the possession, let the pole run. 
looks right, looks left, doesn't see anybody, sees an opening and says, hey, let me bounce this baby home. It's exactly what he does, and it's back to a two-goal game. A low-scoring game in which defenders have accounted for three of the combined eight goals. <laughs> Whistle against Michael. Another face-off win for Syosset. So no make it, take it here for Farmingdale as they've scored two in a row after allowing five straight Syosset goals. Still very much a game. And we were saying that, David, throughout the entire first quarter and second quarter, that this was only a two-goal contest despite how they were playing. Because it, it didn't look good offensively. But it was still a tight game. It was still a game that was in reach. And because of that, Syosset hasn't been able to really pull away altogether as well as they've been playing. Tied at one after the first. Syosset led 3-1 to one at the break. The Braves had a 5-2 lead to begin this quarter. Pucci, a bit of a changeup. Gilman wasn't ready. The senior delivers in the Nassau semis. Big, strong finisher. Second year Syosset player after transferring from St. Dominic's. And he has scored now 37 goals this year. Plays a box style with that big body. This time they run him away. Has two guys come on him. Quick little flick of the wrist, put it low. And that's a very important goal, bringing it back to three. Back to Lipson against Michael. This is an all out scrum. Three on three until possession is secured and there's Danny Oaks. Another face-off win for Syosset. Make it, take it for the Braves. They have won every face-off here in the fourth quarter. They have won now, at least unofficially, nine of 13 in this game. Curling around the crease, Gilman drops the stick to make a save. Matching Alexander as he came around from X. Now Hayden pushing the other way for Farmingdale. Offense spinning it with a bit more urgency. Matt alone loses it around the circle. Quick possession for the Dalers. Curtain the other way. Trouble with it initially. Finds a short stick outlet and bailed out by John Calabria. It is a 6-3 Syosset lead as the Braves look to reverse last year's results in which Farmingdale took down the Braves in this very game. And Jago Emke was the one who got the party started here for Farmingdale in the second half. That opened up the game to two. Emke hurt for the remainder of this season. And then the Palma making an 8-5 contest into the fourth quarter. But here's the Syosset comeback. Quick little touch right along the crease from Matt Korn. Joe Simons on the other end. The lead is up to four. But storming the comeback for Syosset, J.P. Lanig. It's now 10-7, halfway through that final frame. And with three minutes to go, the tying goal from Leon Kalbacher. But in the final minute of play, transition, big rip, the rebound right back to him. And with five seconds to spare, Kyle Tucker with an 11-10 victory. Another close one here. But my goodness, what a difference in the score. John Calabria on the left, Mike Hung Hungerford on the right. Will we see a rematch of last year's final of Massapequa and Farmingdale, or will we see 
a repeat of 2016 when Syosset and Massapequa faced off. Before play continues, let's hear from Amanda, who is listening in on the Syosset huddle. Well, no surprise, guys, but the boxing analogy is back for the Braves, saying, hey, we took a shot before when we gave up that goal to Farmingdale, but we came right back with a shot of our own. That's what the next seven minutes is going to be about. But Coach Calabria reminding his team, we need to just chill out, we need to relax, and we need to stay disciplined for the remainder of this game. I think boxing references are good at any point in the game. I wonder who his favorite fighter is. Big Mike Tyson guy. You know, this is a heavyweight bout in terms of Nassau A. You're dealing with class programs, championship programs, legacy teams. And when you get to this level with these type of stakes, you really have to be committed for all 12 rounds or all 48 minutes because a lot can happen in the last six and change in this semifinal contest. Syosset knows that in particular. They have always looked at Massapequa and Farmingdale just a, a little bit different than their other opponents because they know how good of athletes year after year, no matter what the sport is, it always seems to come down if you're competing against one of the best teams. Either they're wearing that green or they're wearing that blue and gold. So Sayas is always looking up in a way to these guys, even though they're the ones who have been in the championship so many different times. And look at this, stall warning is coming on. We've seen that a few times called. Lanig using as much of the count as he felt comfortable before touching up. And now Syosset has to keep it in the box. Nearly a one minute possession that results in a goal. Pucci to Alexander. 7-3 Syosset. Early on in this game, Pucci would try those feeds inside and they would be turnovers. This time, it's Alexander who's cutting right across in that slot. And then AJ, the young freshman who has been pretty much that new guy in the rotation towards the latter half of the season and is now as part of the starting attack. Look at this feed. In traffic, AJ Alexander, back of the net. And it's a four goal advantage. Perfect possession for Syosset. Time and a score. Ground ball, Oaks. Tosses it to Virch, running in, Virch scores! What a day for the long poles. Syosset breaking away in the Nassau semis. Two goals, 12 seconds apart on the clock. The face-off game in this contest was going to be so, so important. The play off the wing here opens up. It gives the ball to Oaks and eventually Virch. And he just goes right up the middle of the field. Nobody around him. That's the same spot he put it last time. And nobody adjusted to Max Virch who has two goals and has doubled his goal total in just this second half. Last year, Syosset recovered from a late four goal deficit as this high riser from McCormick off the faceoff win sails high. The deficit here for Farmingdale is five. So they'll need to repeat the Braves heroics from last year and then some to get back into it. All better, disappointed that he didn't put that one on cage. On top of those fundamentals that Mike Hungerford spoke about, that they need to obviously make sure they win. Clearing the ball well, not turning it over, which was an issue throughout this game on the offensive side. One of the big ones was also shooting the ball well, and they have not shot the ball well. Either has been right at the stick or they've been misses and clear misses like that. Amirati. Now it's Hayden. 
back to Amirati. Playing with pace. Virch interrupts that. Unsettled. Turning and firing was Hayden. And did Saloro get a piece? I'm not sure because I don't even know if that reached the net. Saloro got a piece of that, but not enough. As that skips by out of the cross of Matt Allbetter. Farmingdale climbs to within four. So in that first situation, they already have extra space and the feed down low from Michael gave a real nice look for Hayden. And I still don't know how that one did not go in. But then you just give it to Allbetter, who is their best shooter on the team and doesn't mind unleashing it from outside like that. He's missed a few opportunities today. But this one's a nice little bouncer to the bottom right corner. Second goal of the contest. You really need a face-off win at this point. Kevin McCormick. Kevin McCormick with a pole. Won the last face-off. Farmingdale trying to win it again. And off of the face-off exchange, an official is down. Coaching staff and medical personnel racing out to the field as play is halted with 4.19 to go. I think he got clipped coming across. He fell backwards and then face down. Now he's turned over. So hopefully everything okay here with this situation. Those guys have a very thankless job. They're the least liked person on the field throughout, and that's well known. It's what you do, though. Do you officiate? It, back in, in the day, I used there to. There sounded something very yes, personal. Back in the day, I used to. These are all very experienced referees, and Long Island may have some of the best lacrosse referees around. with many of them working not just high school games, but also collegiate. So back to this face-off, though. It's so interesting. You would never think, if I told you that Brian Michael was taken out to no longer face off against the Syasa team, you would probably say, you're crazy. He's been a phenomenal face-off guy all year long. He's been winning. 71% of his draws. He's one of the top guys in the entire county, maybe even the island in terms of facing off. And they had to just go with McCormick to try and slow down the rush. And the reason of that has been Lebson and what he's been able to do, moving the ball in the right spot, but it's also been that play along the wing. And the great John Donowski, who once coached here and has won multiple national championships down at Duke, always says this over and over. Face-offs are a team effort. It's not just your guy who's working at the X. It is a full three-man unit. And if that three-man unit is working efficiently, you will be able to win a lacrosse game. Well, we know lacrosse players are tough, and so too are lacrosse officials. So everything seems to be okay. Players showing some concern as well. And we are ready to resume the final four and change of this semifinal matchup after a Farmingdale face-off win. Dalers work it into the box. All better matched up against Oaks. Michael bounces one wide. On the attack, Conti, the ground ball. Transitioning the other way. Oaks splitting two. Such a headsy play. He wasn't looking to push pace. Steady as he goes and set up the defenders for the splitting move. Yeah, the footwork of those poles. Birch, Oaks, even McCormick on the other side are so nifty. Even to the point that actually just looking down all better even gave him a, a little bump, a, a positive bump, I mean, on the fist, saying heck of a play. Rematch of last year's semifinal, a rematch of a regular season game. 
both those contests, won by Farmingdale. Earlier this year, it was 7-5, in which Farmingdale dominated faceoffs. And John Calabria is a straight shooter, and he said to us, if we could just get a little more possession, if we could try to get closer to now 50%, 20, 25%, I think that'll make enough of a dent for us to make a difference. And today, a unit led by Ryan Lebson, supported by Max Birch, Dan Oaks, they dominated the face-off game, they've dominated possession, and they've got the four-goal lead late here in the fourth. I give some credit to Monfort, too. We always forget that when they've run short stick, Monfort's been the guy, and he's also been out there in good spots. And it looks like Syosset will call this timeout and saving A.J. Alexander, so 225 away. But you're right, Calabria is very, very brutally honest, and he even mentioned it during the Massapequa game a while back. We got to win, you know, a third of the faceoffs, which is not that many. You know, you, you, he doesn't mind it. He understands in the realism of what this game is about those possessions. But we're not just talking about winning a third or 40% or even 50. They have won this faceoff battle. They have lost only four today. Four out of 15. I don't like to prognosticate, and the game is not over. But it does appear that Syosset will be moving on to the championship round to face Massapequa. And it has been these two programs, Massapequa and Syosset, if you go back even to 2012 when Syosset won that title, they've split the last six since Farmingdale's last title in 2011. And so we are gearing up for another classic matchup between Massapequa and Syosset on Tuesday right back here at Hofstra. John Calabria already a five-time county champ in his nearly two decades as a head coach who brought this team from a second tier program behind a Farmingdale, a Massapequa, even a Hicksville and an Oceanside to becoming one of the premier in the county and Long Island with a long run of success. And he is on the verge of getting his Braves back to the county final for the first time since winning it all two years ago. He has never seen a team get so drastically better from March to this point. Usually it's slight things. We're talking about a drastic difference. In the early portion of the season, when we broadcasted the game live on News 12 Varsity for Syosset against St. Anthony's, and they knew it was gonna be a real tough task no matter what in that game. Fighting his way through, Lanning. Takes on the checks and scores. Syosset by five. Celebration in the stands, JP. While this may be one of those empty net goals, his individual effort is phenomenal. You're going against two all-conference and all-county and all-American defender in Tim Hegarty, whose name we haven't said a ton today because generally he's been containing Lanik. But with that open net, fell to the turf, still worked out of danger, and basically put that exclamation point for a five-goal lead. Lebson facing off against the long pole of McCormick. Ground ball for Kevin McCormick. Tremendous athlete who's then stripped by Oaks. Oaks and Virch. Who says that you need to be an offensive player to control or dominate a game. Those two defenders have been all over the field and major difference makers today for Syosset. Virch has as many goals today in this game as guys who are gonna be all county players like a Matt Olbetter who scored 40 coming into this contest. There's a Jack Bucci who had another 36. A J.P. Lanning who, while the goal total was down this year, we know is one of the more prolific scorers. Those guys had two, and so did Max Virch. And it's going to be a timeout here for 
Farmingdale with just a buck 12 to go down by five. One will remain to the fourth quarter in Farmingdale. Four. Farmingdale had a pair of timeouts remaining. They'll use one here. Getting it back offensively, trailing by five. And so while Syosset is moments away from securing their trip to the county final, awaiting them, Massapequa. Timmy Lay getting the scoring done early for Massapequa to take a 1-0 lead. In fact, the Chiefs would take a 5-0 lead out of the gates before Mikey Beal would notch the first tally for Port Washington. Athanasian, an impressive individual effort to cut the deficit to just two. But a year after Massapequa scored the last 11 goals against Port Washington in the semifinals, they follow that up by scoring the last six straight going away. A 5-3 game very quickly became an 11-3 victory for Massapequa, stamping their way to the county final for the ninth straight year. They awaited either Farmingdale or Syosset, and it appears that the Braves will complete the county final matchup. What's impressive to me about Tim Rodomsky's squad is the fact they battled some injuries that for most teams, that would end their whole season. Losing guys like Griffin Hawthorne, who's gonna play at Notre Dame next year. Losing a Kenny Brower, who is going to Duke in a couple of years. You lost guys on the defensive side who are game changers. And yet the entire production, the depth of what Massapequa has been able to do. And even Garrett Gibbons said it yesterday to Amanda Puglisi, just talking about just his confidence overall, being the number one seed. They came in there, they wanted to show everyone, hey, listen, this is what we are. We're the best team in Nassau County. We're still the defending champions here in Nassau County. We want another shot to try and win a Long Island championship. And even though they've been depleted, it has been very impressive what they have done throughout the course of the season. Now, if this score does hold up, which it looks like it will in the next 59.9, Syosset is a much different team than they saw a couple of weeks ago. I know it's only been about three weeks in times difference, or two weeks, whatever it is. It's been a short amount of time. This is a different Syosset group. And what's interesting to think about over the next three days, Ryan Lepson and company figured things out as Saloro got a knee on that shot. On the rebound, that goes wide. The face-off unit for Syosset figured out Brian Michael. Do they have the answer for Angelo Petrakis, who universally is considered the best face-off player in Nassau A, maybe the entire county, Maybe Long Island, no time for that debate right now. But can they continue this momentum of increasing their possession? And that'll be a big difference as well as we look forward to that county final matchup. And when they met at Massapequa, they were in the game. They hurt themselves more than anything. They kept shooting themselves in the foot with mistake after mistake. And the face-off game really was not, you know, that damaging until the second half. They somewhat stayed in it throughout the first quarter and a half, but it was really the second half where Petrakis just took over. Now, if you can get back to that number, you maybe win 40% of your draws, and you can capitalize the way you did today. You look pretty good, and you got yourself a good shot. And if you get goaltending like that, which you have seen all day long from Salora. Syosset avenges last year's loss in the semifinals. The Braves take down Farmingdale nine to four and advance to the Nassau County Final. We'll be back in a moment to wrap things up and when we do, we will announce the floor decor and design 
News 12 Varsity Player of the Game. It's a final from Shewart Stadium. Syosset takes down Farmingdale 9 to 4 in the Nassau A semifinals advancing to Tuesday's championship game. With Dan Severino, David Resnick, Amanda Puglisi as well, our entire crew wrapping up this five goal victory for the Braves. We had four long pole goals to choose from as our play of the game. And let's see which one we came up with as the best of them all. Uh, Dan Oaks, no question. Looks like a short stick in tight. Look at this play. Works through two, the protection with the stick and the follow through. And that was such an important goal. That brought it up to a 4-1 lead early on in that third quarter as part of a run where they ended up scoring five straight, which eventually ended up being the difference maker. But those poles were very active today. They knew that they wanted them to be engaged offensively. But a play like that from Oaks, which actually started from another long pole play on the other side from Kyle Curtin. Eventually, Oaks is the one who tallies on the goal for his second uh, second goal of the season. Scored one against Cold Spring Harbor early on in the year. That was just game number two in their first win and scores a goal here at the place he's going to play next year. Well, with this one in the books, let's see what we have coming up next. Coverage resumes on Tuesday, Nassau A Championship, right back here at Hofstra. It's a 6 p.m. start for the Nassau A Championship. Syosset, the three seed against Massapequa, the top seed. And then on Wednesday, May 30th, we cross the river and we head to New Jersey for a pair of championship matchups to be determined this weekend but championship action coming your way all next week on News 12 Varsity. The News 12 Varsity Player of the Game is brought to you by Floor Decor and Design with showrooms in Syosset and Rockville Center or visit floordecorandesign.com. Let's sand it down to Amanda with today's Player of the Game. Ryan, the first time you guys played Farmingdale, they won 13 of 15 faceoffs. Today that wasn't the case. Why was today different? Uh, we've just been working hard all week, putting the work in, you know, practicing as hard as we can every day. And I just think it all paid off today. Last year was a heartbreaking loss to Farmingdale in this exact game. How much was that game on everyone's mind coming into this week? That was on our mind all season, you know. We uh, came into the season looking to play them again. We lost them in the regular season. This was our last chance to get it back, and we did. Next up, it's Massapequa. What are your thoughts on the Chiefs? Uh, they're a great organization, great team. We just got to work hard, train as hard as we can, give it our all. Coach Calabria has been telling us all season long that the thing about your team is you guys keep getting better every week. So what do you think about this Braves team as you guys get ready for the finals? Um, you know, I don't know, just at the beginning of the season, we weren't working as a team and just as as time progressed, you know, we started working together, everything started to click, and we're here right now. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. Ryan Lebson and Syosset peaking at the right time as the Braves securing a 9-4 to victory over Farmingdale to move on to the Nassau A final against Massapequa. So a rematch of last year's semifinal game set the scene for this year's contest. Farmingdale winning last year's matchup in dramatic fashion. And the roles were reversed this year. Syosset as the underdog. But the Braves come out with the victory at the end. A balanced attack starting with the faceoff X, the long pole play of Max Birch and Dan Oaks along with solid goaltending from Anthony Saloro, and we get a rematch of the 2016 final. Massapequa and Syosset Tuesday here at Hofstra. For Dan Savarino and Amanda Puglisi and our entire crew, I'm David Resnick. Nine to four, Syosset takes down Farmingdale. The Braves are moving on to the county final. Thanks for joining us on News 12 Varsity.